Okay. When do you think uh, larger OLED uh, panels uh, can compete with HCD and plasma? Well, I think we'll see um, in 2012, we'll start to see 30 and 40 inch active matrix OLEDs in the one to two million unit volume. But that will be for early adopters and the price will be very high. In 2000, starting 2012 or 2013, we'll start to see relatively high, uh, not relatively, but higher volumes in the five or six million. And then by 2015, we might see 10 to 15 million TVs, and I think they'll be very competitive with uh, uh, LCDs. Are there any technical issues that, that, that must be solved? Or is this... Uh, Technical issues from the manufacturing standpoint. There are issues about uh, having a manufacturing uh, uh, capability to make transistors with the proper uh, mobility and reliability uh, that will stand up over time. And so the only ones today that are used are polysilicon, low temperature polysilicon, which is really too expensive a process for large area devices. So I. It looks like there are two choices. One is uh, multi-layer metal oxides, which are built just like with the same equipment that amorphous silicon is. And if that's the case, then uh, all of the amorphous silicon fabs could be converted at very little cost. Alternatively, uh, if that isn't, if we're not capable of doing that, then a methodology called rapid thermal annealing, which is heating the amorphous silicon up to 600 degrees C. Now that works if you have a certain kind of glass, and porting, for example, is working on that glass right now.